Good morning, my dear friends. Today the church liturgically celebrates the fourth Sunday after Epiphany, and I am basing my sermon this morning upon the gospel pointed for this day, coming to us from the eighth chapter of the gospel of St. Matthew, which I will read to you right now. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus saith unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, Go, and he goeth. And to another, Come, and he cometh. And to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you, that many shall come from the east and the west, and shall set down with Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob, in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into the darkness, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in that self same hour. Here endeth the gospel. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, my dear friends in our Lord Jesus Christ. Here in this eighth chapter, this section of the 8th chapter coming to us from St. Matthew, which I just read to you. We hear again, primarily in this section, the faithfulness, the confidence of the centurion in our blessed Savior. Now bear in mind, as St. Matthew tells us, as our blessed Lord entered into Capernaum, he was approached by a centurion. In other words, a centurion was a, a soldier. He was a soldier of the Legion of Rome. There is occupiers in Capernaum. Here was someone who was a Gentile. In other words, someone who was not even Jewish. And yet, when his servant was sick, when he was desperate for an answer, when he was desperate for his servant to get well, the centurion, the Gentile, the pagan, the soldier of Rome came to the one that he knew could get the job done and heal his servant, he came directly to the source, to our blessed Savior. And when the centurion approached our dear Lord, 
he did not hesitate. He was more than willing to help because our blessed Lord responded to the centurion's plea for help. He stated that he will go to his home and heal his servant. And yet, I would dare say, out of courtesy for our blessed Lord, for you see, the centurion responded, Lord, I am not worthy that thou should come under my roof. And he was stating that because again, he, on the one hand, the centurion, was a Gentile, a non-Jew, a pagan, if you will, in the eyes of the Jews. And he would not allow our blessed Lord to come under his roof because, again, he was a Gentile and our Lord was Jewish. But yet, he stated to our Lord unequivocally, he stated, that all he had to do was say the word and his servant would be healed. For you see, dear friends, the centurion, as I stated, had the utmost faith. The centurion had the utmost trust. The centurion had the utmost confidence that he knew that our blessed Savior would do exactly as he stated. And when he said the word, his servant would be healed. Our Lord, you see, was impressed with this beyond words. And he stated to those, as St. Matthew tells us, he stated to those that followed, St. Matthew says, our Lord stated, I have never seen such great faith as this. Do we have that same kind of trust? Do we have that same kind of faith? Do we, dear friends, have that same amount of confidence in God as the centurion had? Sure, we go to God in prayer, when we need help with assistance. Sure, we go to God in prayer when we need help getting out of a fix that we've more than likely gotten ourselves into. Oh, absolutely, we go to God in prayer and pray for God to help us. And yet, do we still have in the back of our mind doubts, fears, that our prayers won't be answered? When we go to God and ask him to help us, do we ever second guess God? For you see, dear friends, typically speaking, when we go to God and ask him for help, so often it seems that really we're going to God, we're asking for help, and yet, we're really telling God to give us what we think we need. We're asking God to give us what we think is best for us. We're asking God to do what we want. And then when we don't get exactly, precisely, exactly what we think we need, then we become disappointed. we become distraught because we're convinced in our mind, God did not answer my prayer. And yet, very often we know deep down inside, and we know I'm quite sure from experience, that so often when we don't get what we want, sometimes it turns out to be a blessing in disguise. When we don't get what we desire, sometimes it ends up even better. For you see, dear friends, God always wants the best for his children. God always wants the best for us. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, we hear the following. Fear not, for I am with thee. 
Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with my right hand of my righteousness. You see, dear friends, God, as Isaiah reminds us, God is always with us. And we need to be like the centurion in our trust, in our confidence, in the surety of our faith. That when God says he's always with us, we know he's always with us, no matter what. The 118th Psalm, Psalm 118, verse 8, we hear the following. It is better to trust in the Lord than in, to put confidence in men. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in men. In princes. So often, dear friends, we do just that, don't we? We put confidence in men. We put confidence in the things of the world. We put confidence in the princes and the politicians of the world when we know deep down inside, time after time after time after time, we are disappointed. But we know with surety of heart, that God will never disappoint. God will never leave our side. God will always be with us. True, we may not always get everything we pray for, specifically the way that we want, but again, what we want is not always the same thing as what is best for us. A child, you see, dear friends, always wants ice cream. A child always wants candy. A child always wants to spend all of his days playing with toys instead of going to school. And yet, the loving parent knows that the child cannot always have what he wants what he desires. Rather, the loving parent gives to his child what he needs. So too with God, dear friends. God is always there for us as a loving father. And he gives to his children what they need and what is beneficial for them, what is good for them, not necessarily what they want what they desire. Proverbs 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on thy own understanding. Sometimes, as I alluded to a little bit ago, dear friends, sometimes we lean on our own understanding. In other words, we surely know what is best for us. We surely know what will be best. We surely know what we need. And yet it turns out that so often that is not the case. So often the opposite is true. So often what we desire is to fulfill our flesh, to fulfill the lust of our flesh. We need to be more like the centurion, dear friends, and trust with surety of faith, to trust with surety and confidence in our Heavenly Father, and to lean on Him, to be with Him, and know that what He states will come true. Never second-guess God, dear friends. Never doubt His goodness. Never doubt his faithfulness. Know with surety of heart that God gives us what we need, not necessarily what we want. This is a hard lesson to be learned by young Christians, certainly. Because as humans, we do want the things that we want. 
We want the things that we desire. We seek after answers that, again, that we want. As Christians, we need to be attuned to what God wants for us, to be open and willing of heart to do what God desires us to do, to have what God desires us to have, and to lean on him and not on those in the world. So this day, dear friends, may God continue to bless you. May God continue to bless your friends, your family, your loved ones. And may God continue to keep all of us close to his most sacred heart. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. God bless you, dear friends.